It's President Trump's favorite media platform, but now he can't block people on it. Is blocking critics unconstitutional? And are other public officials in trouble? Hi, welcome back to America Uncovered. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Because if you're going to be criticizing powerful people online, you might want a reliable VPN to hide your identity. Twitter. It's the prime platform for sweet memes, spicy takes, and people who will fight you about anything. Anything. Look, it's time to check your mango privilege. But one of the best parts about Twitter is that you can tell people what's on your mind, in 280 characters or less. And you can talk to pretty much anybody, unless you're blocked from interacting with or viewing their tweets. But you are totally free to leave tweets like this on President Trump's feed. You millennials have it so easy. What's that, Shelley? We're millennials? Fine. You younger millennials have it so easy. Back in my day, we had to actually call the White House switchboard from a landline if we wanted to call the president a Nazi. Not that you know what a switchboard is. Or a landline. But these days, the White House would like you to message it on Facebook. Just like your grandma. Or you could go directly to Twitter, like that Twitter user who had some strong words for Trump. Sure, they might be offensive to him, his supporters, or to those people who believe the phrase, go back, is racist. But that tweet is an example of one good thing that social media allows us to do. It gives us the ability to directly interact with our elected officials, and vice versa. That's pretty cool. I mean, how did we ever live before Senator Ted Cruz's weird butter cow post? Or before Senator Elizabeth Warren offered to fix our love lives? If you comment to a post by an elected official, they may or may not respond, but they could also block you. And let's be honest, getting blocked on Twitter just hurts. But when you're blocked by a public official, it hurts them legally. It turns out it's unconstitutional for public officials to block you. At least, that's what a federal court recently told the president. Earlier this month, a federal court of appeals ruled that President Trump can't block Twitter users who criticize or mock him. This decision upholds a May 2018 ruling by another federal judge who said that it's unconstitutional for Trump to block people who annoy him. In other words, Trump's random 4 a.m. Twitter rants must be accessible to everyone. In the original ruling, Judge Naomi Butchwald said Trump's Twitter feed was a public forum and if he or an aide using his account blocks a critic from viewing and replying to his tweets, he has violated their freedom of speech and expression afforded by the First Amendment. Court rulings that bring the Constitution into question have the potential to protect, expand, or restrict American freedoms. And this case involving President Trump is no different. But is it true? Is he actually infringing on Americans' freedom of speech by blocking them on Twitter? First, we have to take a close look at what the First Amendment actually says. We all know it and love it because it's our ticket to saying anything under the sun. I love it because it's one of the reasons channels like America Uncovered and China Uncensored can exist and not be shut down by the elected officials we talk about. The First Amendment protects freedoms of speech, press, religion, assembly, and the other thing that most people forget. Let's just say if this was Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, many would lose this round. Okay, am I the only one that didn't know that this is John Cena's latest gig? Anyway, the part we care about right now is the freedom of speech. Speech includes political speech, hate speech, and thanks to the Citizens United ruling, money. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech and all of that other good stuff in between. What does that really mean? Well, it quite literally means that Congress cannot make or pass laws that restrict what Americans can say. Thanks to the First Amendment, our right to say something is protected within certain limits. But over time, the way we say things have changed. You can say something out loud, send it through the mail or email, or you can post it on social media. And Americans really like to use social media to connect with politicians. Barack Obama was the first U.S. president to be on Twitter. He even became the first president to hold a Twitter town hall meeting. Obama was known for having effectively used a variety of channels and platforms to campaign and communicate with his constituents. But the official at POTUS account came to exist six years into Obama's presidency. It's now under Trump's control. 
Obama had another Twitter account, at Barack Obama, but it was run by campaign aides and it very rarely posted original tweets written by the president. Those occasional tweets were initialed Bo at the end. Wait, Bo is the name of his dog. So was it Bo tweeting the whole time? All this is to say that social media has greatly transformed the way we interact with our elected officials. In the past, if you wanted to hear what a politician had to say, you had to listen to the radio, watch TV, or attend a campaign event. But it's 2019 now. You don't have to watch a 24-hour cable news network to know what's going on in politics, or to know what public officials are saying. You can simply log into Twitter.com, see what they're talking about, and let them have it within your 280 character limit, of course. Can't forget the limit unless you like to read and write really, really long Twitter threads. Now let's get back to Trump. Like Obama, Trump has two Twitter accounts, the official one and the personal one. But unlike Obama, Trump uses mostly his personal account, and he uses it all the time as president. And about one in five adult Twitter users in the US follow at real Donald Trump. On at real Donald Trump, he denounces presidential harassment, comments on current affairs, and announces policy decisions. That explains why the appeals court judges said that Trump uses his personal Twitter account to conduct government business, and preventing people from reading or replying to his very important government business tweets is not okay. Trump's lawyers argued he uses at real Donald Trump in a personal capacity, but Judge Barrington Parker was not convinced. Parker wrote in his decision that the official nature of at real Donald Trump is overwhelming, and that because the president has used that Twitter as his platform to interact with millions of users, he can't selectively exclude people who hold views he disagrees with. But how is blocking people a violation of the Constitution? The president blocking you isn't the same thing as Congress enacting a law or policy. Remember, that's what the First Amendment actually prohibits. That small detail complicates things, but it brings to light an interesting part of the case that other justices have already thought about. Take Judge Barbara Keenan. She served on a Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals panel that issued a similar ruling in January 2018. That court ruled that a chairwoman of a county board could not block critics on Facebook. And in Keenan's concurring opinion, she wrote that cases necessarily will arise requiring courts to consider the nuances of social media and their roles in hosting public forums established by government officials or entities. Because of this, she believes the courts must be careful in how they examine and rule on these issues until the Supreme Court decides in the future how the First Amendment applies to social media. This Trump case and its ruling may have great implications on what it means to discuss politics and express opinions online in the future. As Judge Keenan pointed out, future cases may bring the First Amendment into question and the way it must now be interpreted to apply to the digital world. Long term, it could be a win for free speech on social media platforms. If an elected official can't block you from reading his tweets, that could mean eventually that Twitter and other digital platforms should not have the right to restrict access to political speech. So what does this ruling mean for other elected officials? A lot of them use social media platforms to do essentially the same thing as Trump. Please, please don't ever show me that tweet again. Jamil Jaffer, who served as the counsel for the plaintiffs in the Trump case, has the answer to that question. He told the New York Times that public officials better watch out. If they censor critics from social media accounts used for official purposes, they run the risk that someone will sue them and win. Well, America's most news-generating freshman congresswoman could certainly use that advice. She's facing a similar lawsuit to the one against Trump. So the moral of the story is next time you get blocked on Twitter, whether it's the president or your salty ex, take them to court. No, don't do that. Just contemplate your life and think about why you let everything on social media make you so angry. But really, what this case shows us is that the best response to speech you don't like is more speech. So keep on tweeting, or don't. In the end, my favorite way to use Twitter is to find out that I've read the wrong Harry Potter books. So what do you think about the president not being allowed to block people on Twitter? How will the First Amendment play a role in future cases? Leave your comments below. And this episode has been sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark whenever you go online, in public or even at home, where you may not have as much privacy as you think. With Surfshark, you can protect your private information while surfing the web, like your banking info 
or the websites you visit. And if you're in a country that doesn't allow you to access the entire internet, you can use Surfshark's No Borders mode to get around it. But Surfshark also makes sure that all of your favorite apps and websites will still work no matter where you go when you add them to their whitelister feature. Plus, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And Surfshark has an amazing discount for America Uncovered fans. Go to Surfshark.com uncovered and use the code uncovered to get 83% off a two-year plan. Plus, get one extra month free. Protect yourself online. Click the link below. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.